So we can get a good visual of what a routing table looks like. We're just gonna really quickly cover routing tables and what a routing table looks like. The two routing tables we'll look at, we'll take a look at a router routing table and then we'll take a look at a Windows routing table. All right, let's take a look at what a routing routing a router's routing table looks like. Uh, we have we're going to take it from a perspective of this router right here. So this routing table that we see right here is based off of the routing table that we would see on this machine right here. So let's pick this apart and take a look at the routing table and what we see here. So number one, the first thing we run across is this S. That just means static. It's a static route that's been entered into this router. And we see the next part of this is a quad zero or 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash zero, which means quad zero or the whole internet. It's the everything. This is the default route. So somebody's entered a static default route into this machine. And uh, next we see is the default route is pointing to 192.168.0.2. This is the next hop. And so that is specifying the interface on this router right here. And so the next hop for default route is if something comes into this router, the router doesn't know what, what uh, network it is or where to send it, then it will use its default route to send it to the next top IP address of 192.168.0.2. It also shows that it's directly connected on serial 001. That is the interface on itself. So that's this exit interface to get to that next hop. All right, so that's how a static route would look like. Uh, then we see a little summary here. And that summary gives, this is a summary of 172.16.0.0 slash 16. We can see that it's variably subnetted. So the subnets actually change um, within here into three subnets. And so I can count them. One, two, three. Yep, sure enough, there's three there. And it has two different masks. And so I can count it. There's one, which is a slash 24. And there's another, which is a slash 32. So sure enough, yep, that all checks out. Um, so that's the summary of these networks right here. The next one I see right here, this is representative of the network 172.16.1.0. That is this directly connected network right here. So it's a directly connected network. It even says it's a directly connected network. And the C stands for it's connected. This is a network that's connected. So it's a directly connected network. And it is on Giga Ethernet 00. So that is this interface on this router right here. That interface goes into this network, this directly connected network. So what's the address of that? Well, that shows up on the next line. This 172.16.1.1 is a host address we see that by a slash 32 represents a host address, and it is the interface that's connected to this network. And one reason why this is in this routing table, and we call this a link local address, and one reason why this is inside of the network is because if a packet is destined for this router, like let's say you're pinging in the default gateway, it comes into the router, the router looks it up on its on its routing table and sees that, oh, this is the link local address. This is my address. And to, essentially, I guess, routes it to itself, right? Um, and so, yes, it is directly connected and it is gig and ethernet uh, zero zero. Uh, so that's, that's why that shows up on there. Um, next, we see this 172.16.2.0 slash 24. That is this remote network over here. So how did it learn about this remote network over here? Well, it tells you right here, the R. It learned it through RIP. R stands for RIP. So it's using a dynamic routing road protocol. Uh, what we would assume is that this router and this router are set up to use RIP. They're exchanging information back and forth, exchanging their router tables 
back and forth. So this router has learned about this network through this router. Um, and in fact, it says via 192.168.0.2. So that's where it learned it from. So it sees once again, this uh, uh, interface, this IP address of this router right here. So it understands where that is. This is interesting. This is a little different. Um, this is just saying how long it le has learned that route for. And it does that for some expiration purposes. So it does, if the route goes down and doesn't get an update, then it can expire that route over time. But this network, uh, the next top is serial 000. So it knows I'm gonna send this out 000 um, to get it to its next hop IP address of 192.168.0.2. All right, we've got once again, another summary of the 192.168.0.0 slash 16 network. Um, it is subnetted, subnetted, sure enough, I see a couple of subnets there. Um, and it's two subnets, and we see that it's two subnets there. We've got a 192.168.0 slash 30 and a 192.168.0.1 slash 32. This is the link local, and this is the directly connected network, and both those are on serial 000 interface right there. So that's how you would read a routing table. So what's interesting is that host machines on your network will also have a routing table. So this is an example of a Windows routing table, and we can get a few pieces of information with this as well. I'm not gonna cover it all, but what we see here at the top is uh, a default route. Once again, we've got quad zeros, and um, it specifies the gateway of this network. So that's the router within this network. And it even has the interface then that will it will need to exit to get to that gateway. Um, so that all makes sense right there. And we'll see that there's a lot of other kind of associations within here. Um, like we see a 127.0.0.1 right here. And we know that's the loopback address if we want to test this interface. If the interface is up, but we're not getting some sort of signal, then maybe we test this out to see if that is functioning correctly. Uh, we see some broadcast addresses that are in here uh, so that it knows that it can listen to broadcast addresses. So we see some broadcast addresses in there. And then the other thing that I'll point out with this is we see some 10 networks, we see some 172 networks, but they're all associated with a different gateway as this 10.30.0.1, and the interface is a little different also. Um, now this is interesting. This is actually uh, specifies um, an, a VPN connection. So the VPN connection is, is like a virtual interface that's set up on this machine and then it installs these routes onto this machine. So these networks, it knows how to get these through to these networks by going through this virtual interface, this VPN interface, to get to its destination, to get to those destinations. So if I were to disconnect from the VPN, then these routes would come off and you would not see them. If I were to reconnect then, they would come back on. So that's how your information, uh, that it realizes that it, there are networks on the other side of this VPN connection and how it gets that information over to that other side. Okay, so that's been just a quick overview of routing tables. Hope these videos are helping you out. If they are, can you help me out by hitting that like button?